Hi all, welcome to another lesson. And in this lesson, we are looking at the food groups, which ones that you need to consider some insulin for, and talking a bit more about carbohydrate containing foods. So really with type one diabetes, the name of the game is getting the right amount of insulin or your rapid insulin to match the foods that affect your blood glucose levels. Now we have four macronutrients in our diet and by macronutrients, we mean big nutrients. So they're the ones that provide energy in our diets. These are carbohydrates, fat, protein, and alcohol, which we'll talk about in a separate video. So really what we're looking at today is fat, protein, and carbohydrate. Now, as you've probably seen looking at the list and some of the other videos that we've uh, talked about already, carbohydrates is really the main macronutrient that we're concerned about with type one diabetes, because it is these foods that affect your blood glucose levels the most. And therefore, these are the foods that we need to start considering some rapid insulin for. Now, the first thing to know about carbohydrates is it is really an umbrella term. And by that, I mean it contains lots of different food groups. So usually when we think diabetes, we jump straight to the sugar. And of course, that is definitely a type of carbohydrate. But the one that we might forget about is the starchy foods. So starchy carbohydrates also affect blood glucose levels and therefore will more than likely require some rapid acting insulin to stop uh, really high glucose levels uh, occurring. So really we need to appreciate where the carbohydrates are on our diet and then also look at the foods that do not affect your blood glucose levels and therefore don't need any rapid acting insulin, generally speaking. So just looking at the starchy foods then. So starchy foods, they do affect your blood glucose levels and as I said, will likely require some rapid insulin. There is a threshold where you might not need to give any rapid insulin, but we'll talk about that more other video, in later videos, sorry. So when we're talking about starchy foods, we're really talking about foods like bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, cereals, oats, any pastry, couscous, breadcrumbs, wheat-based foods, and also legumes. Now, when that by legumes, I mean beans, pulses, lentils, chickpeas. So their primary nutrient is actually protein, um, but they do contain some starch in them. So if you're just having, say, half a tin of kidney beans by themselves, you probably won't need to give any insulin because there's not enough carbohydrate there to make a big difference. But if you're adding these into a meal that all already has starchy carbohydrates in them, so for example, a chili where you have kidney beans uh, mixed with some rice or mixed with some mint, sorry, but then you have it with rice, the threshold of your um, carbohydrate or your total carbohydrate intake is going to be quite high. So you're going to need to add in some extra insulin to accommodate for that. But their primary nutrient is protein. Um, so they're not the biggest contributor of carbohydrate in your diet compared to starchy foods, but there are some there. But nonetheless, starchy foods will likely require some rapid acting insulin. So that's one type of carbohydrate. The other type, as I said, is sugary foods, but we have two types of sugary foods. We have processed sugar, which is kind of like all that delicious stuff like cakes, biscuits, sweets, actual just table sugar, um, and other things that you might not necessarily think about. So things like jams and spreads like marmalades, um, honey and syrup. Although honey is technically a natural sugar, we do do a little bit of processing to it. And also the way it behaves in the body when you eat it behaves much more like a processed sugar um, than a natural one. Juices as well, and by juice I mean apple juice, orange juice, um, uh, pineapple juice, those types of juices, not necessarily squashes. So again, they are natural sugars most of the time, uh, particularly the ones with no added sugar, but there is an element of processing there. The amount of oranges that go into a glass of orange juice and then they're mashed up and processed, again, uh, that acts much more like a processed sugar than it would a natural sugar than if you just ate an orange. Um, and other things like sugary drinks as well, Cokes, Sprites, Fantas, those type of pop drinks. Now the zero or diet options do not have any carbohydrates in them or any sugar, but the full sugar ones will definitely require some rapid acting insulin. And as I've mentioned as well, the last type of sugary food is natural sugars. So we get natural sugars in a couple of places. The first one's obviously fruit, as I just mentioned that. Um, the, the sugar in fruit is called fructose. And also you have some in milk sugars, primarily milk and in yogurt. So the sugar that is in those foods is called lactose. So you start to see a pattern here with any sugary containing food, 
Um, you have fructose, lactose, gl uh, glucose, they all end in O's. So if you see a, f a name or a food name in nutrition that ends in O's, usually means sugar if you're looking at the food label. So it just gives you a bit of an indication about what's going on. Now, with the dairy foods, foods like cheese don't actually have any lactose in them, they process it out. So there is actually no carbohydrate in cheese, it's just fat and protein. So really, these are all the types of foods we need to be looking at when we're thinking about carbohydrates and rapid acting insulin. And therefore, when we move on to the carbohydrate counting video in the next video, these are the foods we need to start adding up in order to then calculate our rapid acting insulin dose. If you're not having these foods and actually instead you're having primarily vegetables um, or salad based foods or protein based foods like meat, fish, eggs, nuts, cheese as I mentioned, butter, margarines, oils, there is no carbohydrates in those foods with the exception of vegetables and salad. There is some, um, particularly in root vegetables, but for the purposes of type one diabetes and rapid acting insulin adjustment, we say don't bother adding them up, don't bother counting them. Uh, more on that in the next video, just because you'll end up driving yourself crazy. There's not enough in there to really make a difference. So these are the foods that we're particularly interested in, okay? The other foods we're not that interested in. So assuming your blood glucose levels are in target, and if you had a chicken salad, you wouldn't even need to take any rapid acting insulin because there's no carbohydrates to counteract the insulin. The only time you would take some insulin then is if your glucose levels are high, but we'll talk more about that in the next video. So now you know a bit more about carbohydrates and where they are in the diet, we'll pick up on this theme in the next videos as we go along and start to build on more complex themes. Um, so hopefully that makes sense and we will see you at the next lesson.